So let's start off with what you actually get. So this comes very nicely packaged in this bright orange box. And you've got a little pouch here, which has got some of your cables that you'll need for setting up your uh, solar generator. And I'll show you what those are soon. You've got a user manual and then you get this foam out and here's the unit itself. Now, if I lift this out, this is incredibly light. I couldn't believe actually how light it is. The official weight of it is about 11 and a half kilos, about 25 pounds or so. This unit's suitable for quite a number of applications. You can use it for caravanning, camping trips, outdoor appliances, uh, work setups, backup power during emergencies. I'm gonna be using this to power some of my ham radios while I'm uh, out and about doing portable operation. It allows fast charging, ultra fast charging actually. You can charge it uh, fully from completely flat in 1.8 hours using the uh, inbuilt uh, AC charging feature. It's got a all round safety feature, BMS system instead to stop overcharging or uh, power protection. Also shock resistance as well. You can power smartphones, laptops, mini fridges, uh, just about anything that you can really think of. And it's also sustainable, so if you hook it together with the solar panel, then you basically got a very good off-grid solution. There's quite a few connections here available on the front. You've got a light. This is a very bright light, by the way. It is extremely bright. There's two settings. There's the low brightness, the high brightness. And for some of my ham radio viewers, you will notice what that light is actually sending. So, hey, that might also come in handy. You've got USB-A charging here at the top, uh, 18 watts out maximum. You've got USB-C, 100 watts max out of two uh, ports here at the bottom. To turn those on, you just tap this button, which enables these ports here. There's also a 12 volt out adapter here, which is a car adapter, cigarette lighter plug. And I did a test out of this. It's around about 13 volts that you get. I've got a little adapter here that I plug in with an Anderson power pole and I can turn that on and then I get my output 12 volts here with my power pole which I can then connect into my other equipment because they all use this. I know that the cigarette lighter plug is quite popular with a lot of um, off-roaders but for me I just need this simple cable and uh, a link to all of these products in the video will be in the description below including uh, one of these. The only problem is, is that this cigarette lighter plug is limited to 10 amps which means if you're trying to run anything more you're going to have to use the inverter here at the bottom the 240 volt inverter where you can get up to a thousand watts maximum output. Uh, one of the things about this that I've used it over the last couple of days is I wish that this cigarette lighter plug uh, I wish they had some power poles here or off to the side somewhere where you can get more current out. I probably want a little bit more than 10 amps coming out of this. That's probably enough to run maybe a 50 watt radio, 50 watt mobile HF radio. If I'm gonna have to wanna run more than 50 watts or something that draws more current than 10 amps, I'm gonna have to use the inverter here with a separate power supply. And the question that might be asked by you too is, how much RFI or noise, RF noise, do you get out of the inverter? I'll show you that later on in the video. Having a look at the display just quickly, you've got input here and I'll show you some of the inputs that are available on the back of the unit, but you've also got output and it shows you a time remaining basically of how much charge is uh, left. And there's 95% here at the moment, I've charged this fully up. We've got our voltage, so here at the moment, this is uh, the Australian version, so we've got 230 volts at 50 hertz, which is our standard here. If I plug in a little dehumidifier here, actually, that I can turn on, you can see here that I've just turned that on, and the output has jumped up to about 600 watts, and the hours remaining on the battery are starting to now decrease, and that will slowly go down with an estimate of how long to go on this battery. I think it's probably gonna be roughly around about an hour and a half or so of running. Uh, Jackery actually have on their website a calculator so that you can calculate how long your appliances will run for. Um, you just input the power consumption and it will give you a rough indication. But there, it's around about 1.7 hours or so and you'll see that the battery percentage also drops. You can run multiple outputs, so I can turn these all on all at the same time. So you don't, you're not restricted to just one output. So you can do multiple things like charge your phone, 
you can run your 240 volts or your mains here and you can also run your cigarette lighter plug. So swinging around and having a look at the back, these are your DC inputs here. Now you can input either your solar panel and I'll show that a little bit later or you can use this nice fancy orange cable with a cigarette lighter plug and the appropriate DC adapter on the back. You can plug that in and you can charge it from the car. I'll show on the screen what the charge times are because they do vary depending on the solar panel size that you have, um, if you're using the DC charging from the car or if you're using AC charging. By far, AC charging is the fastest. I charged this from about, I think it was about 20 or 30% and it took roughly about an hour or so to charge, um, but the charge times will vary, so um, you're not gonna lose this cable anytime soon, are you? So here's the manual, and it's pretty easy to understand. It's only a couple of pages long. It's just a little pamphlet. It says here that it uses a lithium ion battery. It's 23 amp hours at 43 volts to get your 1,000 watt hours. Uh, the dimensions, and I mentioned the how, how much weight it was, 11 and a half kilos, 25 pounds. The life cycle, a thousand cycles to 80% capacity. So I think that's for 10 years. So it's going to last quite a long time. Your two AC outputs up to 4.35 amps, so a thousand watts, you can do 2000 watt surge. Your USB A and Cs, there's all of your voltage and amperage specifications. The carport, 10 amps, AC input, 10 amps, DC input, uh, you can uh, input uh, a maximum amount, I think it's here, here it is, 800 watts max, so I guess that's the uh, solar panel's maximum. This is the solar panel and what it comes in, if I open this up, the Jackery panel comes in a plastic, well, plastic bag that you can throw away. And just opening this up, this is pretty cool. In here is where your cables are to connect into your um, solar generator unit, but it actually comes with its own USB-C and usb charging in here separate so you can actually just use the panel itself if you just wanted to charge by USB. So setting up the panel was relatively easy it's really lightweight and it's actually got magnets that stick together you can see here how small it is uh, there's some velcro tabs here at the back that just fold out so that you can angle it towards the sun which uh, is makes it a bit, little bit more efficient than just laying it down on the grass. Uh, yeah, unzip the little pouch from the back and undo the cables that are already there in there. There's two adapters. There's one for the Solar Pro 1000 and then also for the Solar Pro 2000. And you simply just plug it straight into the back of the Jackery box um, and just check the front and you'll see that the input is charging. So it's mid afternoon and I've just plugged in the panel. The panel's plugged into the back, as you can see. I've just got the cable running down here around to the back of the unit, plugged straight in and we've got about 80, 89 watts. It says it's going to take 0 0.8 hours to charge from 94%, so 89 watts out of the solar panel. So let's see how much noise we get out of the Jackery. So what I've got here is I've got the 7300 just on 40 meters here at the moment, just listening with my DX Commander here in the backyard. I've got it attached directly to the power supply and the power supply is running off the mains. So on 40 metres at the moment, it's actually pretty noisy this afternoon here at home. Uh, there's about a S7, S8 noise. If I go up to 20 metres, 20 metres is also a bit noisy. S4 this afternoon here, that's all about normal. That's what I'd expect on this band. Uh, 15, 15 a little bit quieter at about S4, S5. And then we go to 10 metres. 10 meters is always pretty quiet. So that's kind of our baseline. So the Jackery is now saying we're outputting 24 watts and we're doing it over the inverter, uh, the pure sine wave inverter, one kilowatt. That's running via this extension lead up into the power supply. And let's have a look on 10 meters. 10 meters, it looks pretty much the same as it did before. No, no, nothing on the S meter. Let's go down to 15, 15, a bit hard to tell there. Kind of looks the same. 20 meters, 20 meters looks pretty much as it did. There's a strong station, so I'm hearing him, okay. And 40 meters we know is about S9, S8, S9. I don't see anything substantial there. So I'm hearing someone there, so I can't tell 
any interference issues out of this. Now, this is, you know, some fair way from my antenna. My antenna's out the back, out in the backyard. I mean, I think that that's pretty clean. I think if you were to find any noise issues with this, the best thing to do is to run a longer extension lead, like, you know, like a 60 foot or something extension lead. Get this away from your radio, get it away from your antenna, but I've only got this just on the workbench here, and I mean, the antenna's out in the backyard, it's not that far away. And I can't really tell the difference between that and the power supply that I've got running. Let's just have a look on six very quickly. Six meters is always a notoriously noisy band, but I don't really see any difference there. That's what I normally see here at home. I've got 100 watts here on the scale, so I've got that connected here to the Jackery. We're running at 23 watts at the moment, so if we crank this up and we TX, we're TXing there now at 100 watts, and the Jackery says we're doing about 320, 320 watts. And we've got a couple of hours, it's gonna probably be like three or four hours, probably three hours worth of output there. So that's running 100 watts out of the 7300 with the, with the 40 amp power supply plugged into the inverter. So yeah, about three hours runtime which is gonna be more than enough because you're not keyed down all the time like this, especially for sideband. Uh, let's just give it a, a go on sideband. And we're still at 100 watts. Victor Kilo 7 Hotel Hotel, Victor Kilo 7 Hotel Hotel, testing. So it's got averages about 150 watts or so. So what am I actually going to use this for? Well, I'm gonna use it for stuff like camping. In fact, I wish that I had it about two or three weeks ago because I went away and I did a, I activated a POTA. I could have run all of my devices just using this and it's lightweight, it would have been perfect for it, but it didn't arrive in time. So I'm gonna use it for stuff like that. I've also got some microwave transverters, um, ham radio stuff above one gigahertz as well. It, traditionally I've used like a, a 12 volt battery or uh, I've used a generator before sometimes to run that and generators are noisy. Uh, they've also got, you know, they leak fuel and the whole car stinks and all that sort of stuff. So this is gonna be good for that and then I can run it off the solar panel as well. Uh, I can run a power supply. So the transverter also has an option for 24 volts input as well so that I can get extra power out of the transverter. Uh, so that will be handy as well. The testing that I've done, I, I can't really see unless you're holding an AM broadcast receiver like right up next to it, I can't see a lot of noise being put out from it. So everything featured in this video, there are some links in the description if you wanna check them out further. Uh, I mentioned that I wish that I had this a couple of weeks ago on my POTA trip. If you wanna check that out and also some of my microwave adventures that I will be definitely using this for, in fact, you can hear the noisy generator in that video, they will appear right over here on the screen.